So I'm Dave Moore. I'm a GP. I'm from Christian Medical Christian Medical Fellowship. I work in the global department, and I, my my role involves supporting doctors, nurses, midwives, and students who want to get involved in global health and medical mission. And I'm really happy to talk with students who would like advice about planning electives. And um, so I'm just going to share some general advice that are picked up um, from other people about planning electives, but also a bit about my own elective story. And I was also able to supervise electives for, for students when I was working in Papua New Guinea. We welcome you to our meeting tonight. Um, whether you're from a Christian faith background or another faith background, Christian Medical Fellowship is an organization of um, Christian health workers. And we're glad to organize this meeting tonight with Christians in Allied Health and the Christian Dental Fellowship as well. And um, you'd probably be aware that there's a long history of faith and healthcare going together. And that for us as Christians starts with the, the work of Jesus um, his disciples and the history of, of the early church and Christianity. But in Luke's gospel, we hear how Luke, uh, Jesus calls together his disciples and sends them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and heal the sick. And throughout the history of um, Christianity spreading around the world, there's been practical efforts to help people in the communities around through healthcare or education or other ways. So my first experience of a medical elective was in Papua New Guinea at a rural mission hospital. And when you go to a small rural hospital, you can expect to be exposed to all kinds of medicine. Um, you might only be working with two or three doctors in a small hospital, and you can expect to be involved in surgery, helping with anesthetics, obstetrics, and um, tropical medicine in, in a place like that. I went with my best friend and um, he went on to become a surgeon and I think it was the elective that really helped him get the bug for surgery and um, he we saw stuff that you wouldn't see in other places very easily so a big seven kilogram ovarian cyst and we have friends helping to assist with the surgery there and um, being involved in cesarean sections that's one of the common emergency operations that's done um, and then helping with the anesthetic side whether that's giving ketamine or, or spinal anesthesia I wrote a report for my elective. It's good to look back on it. I said it's probably one of the best few weeks of my life, a real challenge, but I enjoyed the medical work and opportunities for friendship. It's also a good time to think, read, learn about mission work and life in another country and how others see the world. The six weeks, six week medical experience is worth about six months of training in the UK. I was able to get a lot of help with um, finance for my elective and um, some unexpected sources, including like my, my primary school had a fund for past members, um, some youth organizations I was part of, um, bursaries, churches I've been part of in the past and my church that I was at as a student. Some of these organizations still give out grants for, for people going on electives. For me, though, the elective um, was the start of a medical mission journey, and I later on became a GP. And... As a newly qualified GP, went back to Papua New Guinea um, to work in medical mission for uh, on a longer term. So initially for nine months and then for another four years after that. So one of the places I worked at was a rural clinic doing a mix of emergency medicine and general practice. And uh, we did some aeromedical evacuation work as well. Um, see the helicopter and plane there. And... Um, I also was able to work in another setting, um, another mission hospital or church hospital. Um, and this is quite a popular destination for electives. This is a place called Compium. And one of our CMF members is working there at the moment doing a, an F4 year. So why do a medical mission elective? Well, there's several reasons really. It's really an opportunity to see how Christians are serving people in remote parts of the world with limited access to healthcare. In many countries, um, there's a government sector to healthcare and there's a charity or NGO sector. In Papua New Guinea, about half the um, services in the country were run by the church in terms of health healthcare. So there's, there's a lot going on. Secondly, it's an opportunity to learn about healthcare in the majority world and often in resource limited settings. It's very different to what we see 
in the UK. There's a breadth of experience, as I referred to, uh, that range of specialties you, you may see. So perhaps often a kind of generalist experience, perhaps rather than a specialist experience. Uh, but there are places where you can go if there's something you particularly want to do. Say you have a passion for orthopedics or you can go to an orthopedic centre in a low resource setting and, and specialise in that. Uh, for me, there was the opportunity to learn new skills in, under supervision and, and spinal anaesthesia would be quite a good example of, of that. The cross-cultural perspectives are really interesting and that is something we can bring back into the UK as we mix with people from other cultures around us. And it's a great opportunity to explore whether medical mission could be for you or if you don't think it's for you long term, how you can still be involved by supporting other people, whether that's through praying or giving or, or other means. So how do you choose where to go? Well, I think if you only remember one thing from tonight, it's to try and start planning early. If you can plan 18 to 18 months, two years ahead of your elective, um, it's going to be much easier and your opportunities will be more. If you leave it quite late, um, it's difficult to get through all the administrative steps to do an overseas elective. But there's some questions you can ask. Firstly, what would you like to get out of the training experience? What are you looking for? Are you looking for a general elective, a generalist elective, where you do a broad range of things, different specialties? Or have you got a particular focus? Is there something you're really passionate about, whether it's perhaps it might be radiology or um, women's health are you wanted to focus in or do something more broad or do you want to do something that's a little bit off the beaten track maybe something like public health um, medical education or something that's not hospital based something that's more primary care these these things are possible and then could this be the start of a longer journey for you would you consider going back to the place where you do your elective later on maybe if you're a, a medical student that could be as a, an f3 doctor um, or in the middle of your specialist training at a later stage. Could be in the early years of nursing, midwifery, or, or dental careers as well. There's often value in depth and going back to the same place again, where you already learned about the context and you got to know people, you've got relationships, you're much more effective the second time round, and you're building on, on those um, experiences. Would you like to work with a mission agency um, helpfully, um, I think it was Ruth who, who, who mentioned how going through an agency um, helped in terms of planning and security. There's a lot of experience available through the mission agencies and they can really help you out, particularly in terms of preventing problems. And then if you get into difficulty and you're in a crisis, it's great to have that support around you. Are you looking for an English speaking placement? Thankfully for us who aren't always great at languages, many parts of the world do practice medicine in English and there's a lot of opportunities available to you if you don't speak another language well. Your language skills do need to be reasonably good if you're thinking about a second language elective, maybe that's French or, or Spanish or um, or may, maybe you, you happen to, to, to be fluent in another language. But I would say beyond GCSE, if you really think about the language proficiency tests for health workers coming into the UK, we expect a, a, le a level of proficiency for safe communication. Um, you, you at least need to be able to understand a ward round and take a history and, and benefit from the teaching in a different language. So it might be possible to do an elective in a different language, but you would need to be quite focused about preparing for the language side of your elective as, as well. Is there someone else you can go with? That's, that's good in terms of security, but someone to share the experience with and you're going to perhaps see difficult things during the elective. It's someone you can talk to about that and just um, share some of the fun times as well and, and the opportunities for travel. What are the risks um, associated with the place that you're going to? Um, are there travel restrictions? Have a look at the government travel advice. I, I wouldn't recommend going to a place with travel restrictions, particularly because it might invalidate your travel insurance. Then there's the timeline. This is why I'm recommending um, starting 18 to 24 months. So first thing I, I would suggest is, is talk to people around you, your family, um, if you're part of a church, talk with the church leaders um, about your plans for the elective. As you do that, they're able to help you and support you in the journey later on. Then you can apply for a placement. Maybe that's through an organization. Once that's secured, 
do start the process of applying for funding and sponsorship. Then you have to get a visa. You might also have to apply to a different government department for a work permit. Do contact your medical indemnity um, organization. They often provide free cover for medical electives. You're gonna have some health clearance steps to go through. You might need to prove um, your HIV status. You might need a chest X-ray to screen for TB before you'll get a work permit or a visa. So you can see there's quite a lot of steps. And if you um, get stuck in any of the steps, it can make it difficult to move forward. So do, do start early. I wouldn't recommend you book flights until you've got your visa and work permit in hand. You often feel under pressure to do that because the price of the flights goes up. In terms of travel advice, I would say the greatest risk for travellers is around road travel. Um, roads can be dangerous in, in many parts of the world and going particularly on motorbikes is quite a high risk thing to do. Do seek out specialist travel advice. So you can look on the internet at the NHS travel advice on fit for travel and that'll tell you about the country and specific vaccines that are rec recommended and the options for malaria, which parts of the country are um, at risk for malaria. But I think it's even better to go and see if in your university city there's a specialist travel clinic who can provide you with the vaccines, prescribe the anti-malarials, maybe prescribe you the HIV post-exposure prophylaxis. If not, perhaps a sexual health clinic could help with that, but your university should have a, a mechanism for you to take HIV post-exposure prophylaxis out with you so that if you've got a needle stick injury, you could start on medication straight away. Malaria is a risk in many parts of the world. Um, one of the most effective ways is using an insecticide treated mosquito net. Um, do, do take prophylaxis, but be aware of a delayed presentation of malaria. My friend Dave, who I traveled to Papua New Guinea with, got malaria a few months later on his return to the UK. And it, it took people a little while to figure out what was going on. So um, Ellie McBain is a student in Newcastle and she's helped us with electives talks in the past and this is her suitcase and um, different things that you can take um sort of favorite medical books whether that's your oxford handbook of clinical medicine or i like the oxford handbook of tropical medicine um a bnf is a very useful thing to take because you can leave it behind as a gift for a health worker and you're probably not going to have a decent internet connection in the place that you're going to we're, we're quite used to online reference but in remote areas you might not have the internet a SATS monitor can be quite useful. There's an organization called Lifebox that produce high quality ones that are a good gift to leave to a, a surgical department, or you could get a cheap one like this from, from Amazon. Again, it might be a useful thing to leave behind. Um, stickers, that's a nice lightweight gift to take. Um, and someone mentioned the um, Traveling Light devotionals book um, that, that CMF produces. That, that, that might be something to consider. You can get these PDF downloads as well. Ask the people you're going to visit what, what they would like you to take. I'm sure they would love some chocolate or um, maybe a, a favorite treat, like some, I like shortbread, and um, that travels quite well. Um, maybe you're leaving a gift for a local health worker. So a good torch or a good solar light, that could be really good. Um, or simple gifts that travel well, like caps or t-shirts. Um, we, we got asked to do teaching for a group of students. So we, we had a quiz and we had like caps and t-shirts as prizes for the quiz. So quite, quite, quite useful things. Um, if you're unfortunate enough to get held up, it might be useful to have an old phone with you, um, and an old wallet that you could give away if you got, um, if you got, got robbed or attacked. And probably the number one piece of kit I would say is a, a good head torch. And that's really helpful for perhaps um, operating situations where the power goes out or um, or just doing examination or treating unwell patients at, at night. Um, someone asked about mission agencies. Here's a few of the big ones um, that, that organise elective placements. So serving in mission, um, U UFM, that's United for Mission, Youth with a Mission, that's, that's where this ship was in Papua New Guinea. Africa in that mission, they have a number of places. Um, mercy ships and WEC. Um, I would say as well that the International Christian Medical and Dental Association is a good source of help 
for planning an elective that's perhaps a bit unusual. So it may be that you have got a particular desire to go to Ecuador and you really want to do orthopedics. That's going to be quite a hard one to find, but you could go on the ICMDA website and go to Ecuador and contact the country rep for that area and ask if they could connect you with a Christian orthopedic surgeon in Ecuador that you could write to to request an elective placement. Um, you could also use the ICMDA connection to connect with a local Christian medical group. And it was great to hear about the connection with the group in, in Ghana earlier. Finances, don't let the cost of this put you off. Um, it's quite daunting when you draw up a budget and think of um, the different costs involved, especially with cost of travel at the moment. But God is able to provide. Um, so there's a, a, a sense of dependence on God. We can pray for help in this area, but we can take action as well. We can reach out to family and friends, your church, people have been significant in your life. People have an interest in mission, your local CMF group. And there are a number of funding agencies and we've put together a list on the CMF website that you can apply to. And I would say if you were organized, um, it, it would be possible to cover a lot of the costs of an elective um, by, by seeking help in, in some of these areas. I'm mindful too, for me, uh, I've, I'm someone who has traveled a lot and been more mindful in recent years of the environmental cost of flying and chose to start doing carbon offsetting through a Christian agency called Climate Stewards. So you might consider building that into the budget as well. Afterwards, do arrange a debrief with your organization or perhaps someone from your church. Um, there's a lot of significant things you'll see, a lot of deep, deep learning. It's good to talk about it. Be willing to write reports or do presentations, especially if people have donated or supported you. Um, it might be a nice thing to make a little video about your elective to summarize it and share that with donors. That, that would go down really well in a presentation. So as you go on your elective, if you're shooting bits of video or taking pictures, do ask the uh, for the permission from the patients, um, especially, especially if it's a clinical or more sensitive type photo and where that can be used. Is it just to show to health workers or is it allowed to be used online? And we'd love you to write a report for the CMF website. We've got, again, a little database of uh, reports of previous students, and that's very useful for a student who's looking to do the same elective. So to summarize, um, is the elective the first step in a longer journey? Is it the start of a relationship with a group of people in a different part of the world that you could continue and go back to at a later point in your career? Do start the planning process early, 18 to 24 months in advance. I'm not saying it's not possible to do something in six months time. I think three months would be very difficult, um, but I would recommend 18 to 24 months. If you're a Christian, you're wanting to do a medical mission elective, I would definitely recommend going through an organization to benefit from their support and expertise. Go with a friend if you can for extra security, support, and the opportunity to talk about what you're seeing. And as you travel, do enjoy the journey. You're gonna to go to some amazing places. Um, slow down if you need to, take a little bit longer to get there or on your way back to, to stop and see things and take time to appreciate the people and, and places that you visit. The CMF website has got a lot of resources on electives. So um, we've recently written an article for the student magazine Nucleus on planning your elective. So that's in, a, that's in written, a written form of this talk that I'm, I'm just giving. We've got a database of placements there. There's a, a page of funding opportunities, the elective reviews, and a, a handbook about planning electives. I um, wanted to also give a shout out to the Electives Network, um, which you can find at electives.net. You have to pay a little bit to sign up to that, but it's got a lot of good resources and experience put into that website as well. I'm willing to um, meet up with students who, who want to talk more about electives. If you want to arrange a Zoom call with me, you can drop me an email. Also want to flag um, some of the other things we do at, at Christian Medical Fellowship in our global department. So we've got an 18 month track called Global Track, which is alongside um, study and work. And um, it, I, I think it'd be fun to have some denti dentists or dental students um, or other allied health professionals on that. So do feel free to apply for that if you'd like to. 
but our next intake is in September, but the closing date for applications is in a couple of weeks time. We've got a couple of courses coming up. Um, Momentum Yes is an introductory course about mission. We're held, holding that for a couple of days in May, May 4th to 5th in London. And the Developing Health course is an introductory course to global health. That's the 13th to 20th of July, also in, in London. As a student, you can, you're can you welcome to come for just one day or, or, or two days of that if, if it's difficult to come for the whole time. Um, but that's a place where you can meet health professionals from the UK who are um, passionate about medical mission and, and involved. So that's um, what, what I had prepared in terms of presentation. I think just be good to go back over the Slido and see some of the results of what, what came in so far. So great to see a real spread of um, health professionals with us tonight. Um, Thanks for also writing some suggestions down for what you want to get out of your elective. And as you plan it, it's, it is useful to begin with some of those aims in mind. Okay, so we'll go to the question time next. And um, I think Rachel, would you mind leading us on this section? Uh, start with the most requested question which is hi I'm a pharmacist so I just wondered what kind of thing would be expected of me or what I'd get the opportunity to do I assume on an elective um I don't know who wants to take that um, I think I think I could start with that um so I think it's good to go to a reasonable sized hospital that has a pharmacy department and a pharmacist that could supervise your elective. Um, and then you could be involved in, in the running of a pharmacy and um, whether that's ordering of medicines or um, arranging the medicines, but also uh, how that interacts with the rest of the hospital. Um, so it, it, it's probably going to be broader. If if you would like to do something a bit more clinical as well during your elective placement, do feel free to ask about that. And there's often opportunity um, at different places to, to see other things as well as the pharmacy department. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, Uh, can you give uh, some more examples of big organisations such as YWAM and AIM um, that you could research, I assume, to do a, an elective with? Um, Dave, are you able to just put the slide back on that you had before? Yeah, I know you might not be able to. Um, also, do check out the um, electives page. There is a database of hospitals and mission organisations. Um, we're currently updating that one. Um, so that's also a good resource to, uh, to use if you want to go with a particular organisation. And obviously there are lots and lots of um, like non-mission organizations that organize electives. And so yeah, just if you kind of Google that kind of stuff, it, you, there's usually pages that have a list of those organizations as well. Yeah. And like Dave said, if you're interested in something specific, um, then do have a look into that. Um, I'll put up um, a link about if you're interested in child health, for example, um, there's... Um, the uh, International Child Health Group actually have um, a whole toolkit um, for electives. Um, so if you're specifically interested in that, um, that's something to look at. Um, but yeah, just having a think about what you what you want to get out of the elective is probably um, the biggest way of sort of centering your um, experience and figuring out what uh, what you want to uh, to get out of it. Um, that would be my recommendation. Brilliant. Um, how did you choose where you wanted to go? Um, I'm going to, I don't know if Karen, you had mentioned at the beginning that about your elective. I'd love to hear from you how you decided. We had a little bit from Dave about how he decided to go to PNG. Um, yes, um, I, I went to India on my elective to a mission hospital. Um, that was that ran partly as a, an orphanage res rescuing girls um, and um, but they had a medical and a dental center there. Um, I, I went there 
um, probably mostly because um, students from the year above who are also CDF members had gone there ahead of me. Um, I don't think I mean, we are talking probably 40 years ago. I don't think there were so many um, late elective opportunities perhaps back then. Um, so, so that was certainly one that um, I was aware of, as I say, because um, CDF members who were older than me in, in Newcastle Dental School had gone there the year before. Um, so that was a, that was a good uh, guru. And one of the ladies who was um, the expatriate um, uh, missionaries who was there was was a dentist and she was part of the CDF. So that's personally where I heard about that opportunity. Um, but there are um, other uh, opportunities now um, for dentists um, through an organization called uh, well, Bridge to Aid. I don't think they take so many dentists now because they're training their own um, in-country people to, to train up people for health um, opportunities, dental opportunities. But there's um, uh, Dent Aid and uh, One to One is another um, uh opportunity for dentists to do um, electives in Cambodia. Simon's um, an, an ambassador for them, so he could give you more details on that. Um, so um, yes, there are there are a few opportunities, but but that's that's how I came to to do my elective. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. It's really helpful. Um, yeah, so yeah, as Dave was saying in his presentation, you know, it's about, yeah, is there a particular location that you want to, a particular specialty that you'd like to experience? A particular type of healthcare system um do you want to travel there's lots of things that can um shape where you decide to go i i'm very much like um yeah i went to ghana because that's where my family are from and um, but I actually went to an area that my family are not from or don't know much about so they're actually really nervous for me to go to this sort of place in the middle of nowhere um, but yeah i had a really really great experience there brilliant okay we're going to move on to the next question this is a great question i don't think i've ever had this question in an elective evening how uh, would dietary requirements be navigated? And as somebody who has a nut intolerance, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what the group will say. <laughs> I want to go to Lizzie because you're like nodding enthusiastically. I don't know if you have some wisdom. About... Well, I think, it, I think it depends on where you get. Yeah, I think if you had a nut allergy, I think West Africa might be quite, quite challenging. Um, but um, I think it depends, again, what type of place you're gonna be going to so i think um there was a there has been questions about um if you go on your own rather than with an organization um i think that's that's quite a key factor obviously if you get if you're going with an organization then they can advise you on what you know on what um what the situation would be whether you can buy stuff um i do have a friend who's um celiac and lived in kenya for a year um so it is it is possible um i think um again just doing your research and finding out um what the situation is um i think there's a there's a vast array of different um setups some are a bit more um rustic shall we say and some are um a bit more um organized or um a bit more international so yeah doing your research i think would be my advice for that yeah and it may be that you need to take things with you if you have like very strict dietary requirements um I, th I think one thing to note is about hospitality and respect so if you're especially if you're going somewhere where that is kind of low resource low income um often there are certain cultures that have a big you know like hospitality is really big so somebody might have taken a significant amount of the money that they spend on a weekly basis to make you food so just where you can be as respectful. Um, and if it's something that it's is a preference rather than like a health need, um, just kind of bearing that in mind. I remember on my elective, there was a lady who ran a local shop and we used to go there and buy our stuff. And she had, like, before we left, had gone and like made this amazing soup for us. Um, thankfully it was like really tasty and we really enjoyed it, but you know, you just couldn't refuse, um, refuse that because she'd gone out of her way um, to show us kindness. So brilliant. Uh, next question, what resources and essential items would you recommend taking on an elective? Um, yeah, David, I don't know if you're able to put up Ellie's suitcase um, on. Um, yeah, the panel, is there anything else that you would add to that suitcase?
Personally, I, I, I've done several trips to Africa and I found hobnobs have been really good if you get a case of the runs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, there's lots of fibre, a bit of sweetness in there, a bit of energy and, and actually hobnobs <laughs> on a very practical level. I think I would I would echo that. Just making sure you take um, appropriate like medical supplies for yourself. Yeah. Try to use more ibuprofen, lipramide, um, whatever Rennies or some sort of Gaviscon type thing. Just so yeah. you have your own supply if you if you do kind of get unwell. And, and yeah, fluid yeah. replacement, um, sachets or something like that. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, anything else, team, that you would add for the? that yes okay um was there much time or chance to go and explore the country or is most of the time spent on placement um do you want me to pick this one up i think um i think this one's a bit of a negotiation really i, I think about the expectations of your medical school um, I, I think there probably are people who go to extremes on this and do very little medicine on the elective um, and, and do a lot of tourism. Um, I, I, I would say enjoy the journey as well. And th there's, there's going to be an amount that, that's reasonable. Um, and if perhaps you're even able to extend your elective somehow to get to do a bit of extra traveling, then then that could be a good good time to fit that in. Any Any other thoughts on that? I think I think the thing I would add to that is firstly just check what your requirements are from your med from your institution. Um, for example, a lot of medical schools you do it at the end, and it's the final thing that you need to get signed off. And it would be really silly to not get signed off because you spent the six weeks traveling and didn't do what you're meant to do. Also, talk to your hosts. They may be very interested in in saying like you know you can actually have Thursday Friday off one week so that you can have a long weekend to travel. Um, yeah. And it may be that you choose a particular destination so that you can explore in, in a way that you want to. Um, but yeah, you just have to navigate those appropriately. Um, any advice on precautions for tropical illnesses other than malaria prophylaxis? Dave, Lizzie, you're probably our... Well, everyone seems to get diarrhea, so... <laughs> Be you know be be careful about um, precautions for hand washing um, the food that you're eating. That I think the traditional advice is that um, it should be food that's cooked properly or or, or freshly peeled. Be quite be a bit wary about salads and and street food and stuff. But um, use the travel health resources of your travel health clinic and the yeah. um, Fit for Travel website to get to get good. Um, advice about immunization and, and general travel health precautions. Um, uh, Mercy Ships has pretty good advice about uh, um, diarrhea and uh, um, avoiding jumping into the emodium straight away, which was mentioned earlier. I So many times I've wanted to punch a volunteer in the face for coming to me and saying, I've been on emodium for five days now and it's not any better. So you need to be careful about not trapping a parasite. Mm -hmm. so generally, we say to people that, uh, you know, if you are unwell and you can't get out of the bathroom, stay there for the first 24 hours. You get a day off work, live on boiled water and hobnobs, I guess. But mm -hmm. the second day you live on bananas, rice, applesauce and toast. Mercy mm -hmm. ships routine. Um, mm -hmm. Don't do the modium unless you are, you know, six hours away from a 17-hour aeroplane flight. But if you do have to resort to Imodium, you need to go and have a do a stool sample when you get home because you may have picked up a, a parasite. So don't jump to the Imodium. You really should just be very gentle um, and and very, very conservative. Sorry, mm -hmm. that's my little bit. I, you know, the number of times. I've rescued people, raised them from the dead to get them on aeroplanes from time to time. But mostly you should be very, very gentle with these things. Anyway, that's thank you, Simon. That's really, really, really helpful advice. Um, I think Bronwyn in the chat has also said I am um, bought anti mosquito um citronella stickers, um, mm. which worked very well and were less sticky than the anti mosquito sprays. Yeah, 
I can also recommend the, some of the wristbands as well. Simon, you've got some. So I don't want to butt in again, but um, um, the best mosquito repellent is um, Avon Lily of the Valley hand cream. Mm. It's far better than any of the other things. Great. True. <laughs> Top tip. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, great. We'll move on to the next question. So what's um, specific funding options, grants are there um, available for med students? And I open up to dental students, um, allied health professionals. Um, CDF team, so Simon, and um, do you want to talk about any that are available through CDF? And then we can talk about ones from CMF side. Well, I, I don't know anything specific. There is a, there is a, a very, very, very small fund. You don't realise how small CDF is. But it's absolutely tiny and it has a matching very, very, very tiny fund uh, to help uh, with um, um, electives, but it is very small. Yeah. Can I just add in there that if there are any dental dentists on the call or watch the video later, that if they go to the CDF website, to the students page, there's um, uh, information there about how to apply for the bursary. We have um, £1,200 which we split into a number of um, bursary awards. So it depends on how many people really um, apply, um, but but it could be anything up to £400, uh, which students might get as, as part of the bursary. Um, uh, and we just ask that they're CDF members and that they write us uh, an article at the end um, uh, for you know, in uh, in reciprocation for the um, for the bursary fund, so there's information there on the website if they go to the student page about how to apply. Thank Someone's you. mentioned uh, local Rotary Club. Um, a, a big source of funding for CMF is Medical Missionary News. They provided sixteen grants to students this year for for medical electives. Uh, but do look on the CMF electives website there's a page on finance uh, with suggestions the other key place to look is your medical school and um, they often have specific bursaries and, and grants available for electives and it's just about finding out about them and applying for them yeah i think for nursing and midwifery there are some um some links on the rcn website um for funding and things like that but yeah i think your nursing school should also have some links potentially Great. Um, I'm conscious of time. And so I'm wondering if we do a bit of a wrap up and then we could maybe answer just a few more questions sort of after we formally close, if anybody has any burning, additional burning questions that they want to ask. Um, so I'll hand back to, to Dave to sort of round us off and then we can pick up a few more questions. Great. Um, just wanted to ask if you would have a moment just to get your phone out and scan the QR code um, to give us feedback um, for tonight. Um, just saw in the chat as well, grant from Timios Trust. I got a grant from Timios Trust. They give grants to young people um, wanting to, to, to travel and do worthwhile projects and then others from the university. Um, Lizzie, do you want to give you the final word? Do you want to wrap us up? Lizzie, we can't hear you. You're on, you're on mute. Too busy answering the things on the chat. Um, great. So I think we'll just finish with some prayer and then, uh, yeah, we'll finish with some more questions. Yeah, Lord Jesus, we're just really grateful for a, an opportunity just to um, to listen to um, these guys who've presented and... Um, to the guys from the Christian Dental Fellowship as well as uh, Christian Medical Fellowship. And we just thank you for everybody on this call. Thank you um, for what you're going to do through electives, through what you've already done. And we thank you that you um, you love us and you give us these opportunities to serve you um, and to learn more um, about creation, about what you've called us to do, Lord. And I just pray that everyone who's on this call will be inspired Um and be close to you and we pray um for all the practical details that need to be sorted um for people's electric trips that you'll just bring that all together um and that lord we would just continue to glorify you in jesus name amen
Brilliant. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the formal end of this evening. Thank you so much for coming. But we will just hang around for another like five minutes and just answer a few more, few more questions. So if there's a question you really want answered, upvote it and then I will <laughs> I will ask it. Um, sorry, I, I was going to add on a question about um, health insurance that sort of came in the chat. Um, please get health insurance. Like it's the most important thing. <laughs> uh, if you're going to travel, please, 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 please. It is. We're so used to the NHS that we forget that actually healthcare is really expensive and to, to be repatriated is also incredibly expensive. And I can share stories of people that haven't got health insurance that have yeah, had to crowdfund. So please get health insurance. Your university may give you advice on this. If you're going with an organisation, they may also give you advice. Um, but do just have a look at things like, like how much they're willing to pay for things and repatriation costs and stuff like that when you get your insurance. But usually it's not very much. Um, I've had a great question here about what would your what would be your advice on seeking God's guidance on where to plan an elective? Great question. Yeah, I think it's, it's a good thing to pray about, isn't it? Because it, it can be the start of a, a longer journey in a, a, a direction in life. Um, seek advice from trusted friends around you, perhaps church leaders or people in your Christian medical fellowship, Christian union, um, and, and think about where does this elective fit in with your hopes, aims, plans for, for, for later in life as well. Yeah, I, I think that's great advice. I also think um, um, you might go with a goal to kind of um, learn new skills, medical, um, medical or nursing or dental things, um but actually like um you're often surprised by the things that you learn that are sort of potentially out you know outside of that culturally or other things so um yeah just to, just to be open to to those things as well as learning about your profession yeah, thank you um so i'm actually going to ask two more questions and the rest of the questions we sort of already answered so we'll just sort of quick fire them um, what advice would you give to someone who's going on a, an elective alone next month to South Africa, not affiliated to an organisation? Sounds very specific question. So. I, I think my one piece of advice would be to um, connect with a local Christian medical group in the place that you're going to. Um, so re reach out through the ICMDA, International Christian Medical and Dental Association. So if you go to icmda.net, look up the country, say where you're going uh, and ask ask if there's someone local who can help you and um, that you could connect with while you're there great any okay cool. brilliant i'll ask the last question which is um is it too late to organize an elective now for this summer Um, it, it probably is for certain parts of the world uh, that just those all, all those paperwork steps, um, especially like things happen quite fast in some countries in terms mm -hmm. of paperwork and things don't happen fast in many parts of the world. Um, so that might limit you to a, a UK based elective. But actually, there's there's a lot of things that you could do in the UK that, that could be quite interesting, um, particularly if you are interested in something a bit cross cultural or um Perhaps some, something a bit off the beaten track and um, that there that, that could be a way to set up something like that in, in the UK and do feel free to tap into Christian Dental Fellowship, Christian Medical Fellowship for ideas about that kind of thing. Um, you might, if you're going to try and go for a, a summer elective, go go for a kind of a well-worn track that several students have gone down before you, um, a place that regularly takes elective students, that has a process, that has accommodation that can make the planning easy, that has a good website. If you're just impatient, you should try again for later. But if this is your last chance before graduating, I can get you one in Cambodia for summer if you want. Mm. That's, that's an amazing offer. That's an, take, whoever answered that question, if you're still on the <laughs> you, um, do take that up. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can, so you can, um, I guess students at cmf.org.uk. If you email us, then we'll connect you with Simon. Um, brilliant. Okay, I'm just going to whiz through these questions. 
Um, so we've said lots of things about funding. So if you go on the CMF electives page, you can find out about funding. The you know, average cost will vary. Flights are very expensive. Some places are expensive to, to stay in. Um, others are cheaper. So it just depends. Um, like for example, going to the US, I know is really expensive. Um, um, and do you have to organize an elective yourself? I know, I think there are some uh, universities that will like, have suggested things or share things that shouldn't have done before, but mostly you have to organize it and fund it yourself. Um, and do you have a list of possible countries? Again, go on the CMF website. There's a list of, there's a mission database and a country database and former elective reports. So you can get some ideas there as well. Yeah. And yeah, check on the FCA website about where you can and can't go. And if, if there's any dentists wanting to do electives, then um, if they get in touch with myself or Simon via CDF, then we can put them in touch with dental electives that we're aware of. Thank you, Rachel. Brilliant. So yeah, whistle stop tour. Um, but yeah, just want to say thank you so much to all of you for coming and thank you so much to our wonderful uh, contributors. Um, and thank you to, yeah, to Karen and Simon from CDF, uh, to Dave who organized this and to Lizzie uh, for all of her wisdom and input and fun. We thank you to our presenters. So um, Yar, Bronwyn and Ruth. Um, yes, so if you have any further questions, please do. Yeah, you can email students at cmf.org.uk. There's a few other, I think Ruth put her email address in. Go on the CDF uh, website as well and you can connect with CDF there and we'd be really happy to help you in any way that we can. Oh yeah, Karen's put her email address there. So if you're a dentist, you can email there. Uh, and if you're an allied healthcare professional, please also email. There is a Christians and allied health um, group that we can also put you in, in touch with for some more specific opportunities. So yeah, that is me formally closing uh, this evening. Thank you for coming. Do connect with CMF UK if you haven't already. If you'd like to find out more about us, please do. We have an Instagram account um, or you can email us. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you at another CMF event soon. So take care, goodbye and God bless.